Yesterday in my talk, I said, how did the early Christians convert the world to Jesus Christ? Because there were not many of noble birth, not many that were rich, not many that were powerful. But God took the weak of the world to shame the wise. But there was one example, one exception to that rule of the early Christians who was powerful and had money and had prestige and position. It was a man named Erastus. And you could see his name right here. Erastus. See, E, that's cut off. E R A S T U. And an, an S. And at one time, this was filled in with bronze. It was part of the whole walkway because right here was the big theater of Corinth. So you came down to watch the plays, hear the orators, the debates, the recitations. You'd come down here to this theater, which you could still see part of it, and you would walk along this road. And in the middle of the road is this man's name in bronze, gleaming. Everybody would see it. He wanted everybody to know his name. So who was this guy? I'm going to read to you from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. I love this because this is a tie-in with real history and the New Testament. So many people like to say the Bible was just handed on from generation to generation. It's all mythology. It's not history. Baloney! And I'd use a different word except I'm a polite company. What bulls leave behind? <laughs> Catholic Answers magazine asked me to write an article on, with the title of The Stones Cry Out, how, how archaeology proves the, the truth of the Bible. This was one of the examples. This was a primary example I used along with many others in the article. If you want to read it, it's on my website. Just type in archaeology or The Stones Cry Out in my search engine. But this ties real history in with the writings of the Bible, the epistles. These are real people. This is not mythology. And it again shows for the skeptics that the scriptures are true. One example, there were people that said, you know, I don't mind your creed, but I do object to the part about Pontius Pilate because it seems like you're trying to tie this all in with real history. Uh, <laughs> oh, gee. Uh, our whole creed is real history. Amen. And everybody thought that Pilate, because there was no physical evidence of him or record of him, that he was a created fall guy by the writers of the, of the Gospels to make, create a fall guy for the death of Christ. We'll make this mythical figure Pilate. And they said, you know, the Gospels are written a hundred years after. They made it all up. It's all story. Until they had egg on their face in the 1960s when they were excavating Caesarea Maritime by the sea, which in Holy Land Part 2 were going to go there. And they flipped over a step that was being used as they were using, doing the archaeology. They flipped over a step, and guess what was carved on it? Pontius Pilatus Procurator Judea. Wow. Now the skeptics had egg on their face, and they continue to. King David's another example. There's no physical evidence for King David. They're still digging around and trying to find out. No. David was a mythical figure. He was the quintessential king of Israel, made up to be this great king to give the Jews pride. Until up in the area of Dan, northern Israel, by the Lebanese border, they dug up a stone called a stele, a stele, S-T-E-L-E, -E, which is a stone in which kings or others wrote down their exploits, and they set them up in the center of a city so that everybody could read the exploits of the victories of the king. And right there he was saying how he went to battle against the dynasty of Daoud, David. 3,000-year-old stone, archaeologists had to admit it again, egg on their face, there really was someone named David. And not only that, but even 3,000 years ago, it was referring to the dynasty or the kingdom of David, which showed that even at that point, they recognized him as being a, good, a great king and had written it into the stele. Now we come to Erastus. I just wanted to lay the foundation a little bit. In the book of Romans, chapter uh, 16, I'm going to start with 22. I, Tertius, who write this letter, greet you in the Lord. Wait a minute, I thought this was Paul's letter to the uh, Romans. What did that just say? I, Tertius, who greet you. Paul wrote the letter from here. But Paul didn't write his own letters. I think that Paul had eye problems. The thorn in the flesh, this is my contention, and I'll argue with anybody about it. 
because I think I have a good case. When Paul was blinded, did I talk about this already? Yes, in my yeah. talk? Okay, good, I won't repeat it. I thought I did. Eye problems. He didn't write his own letters. He signed his own letter with big letters, his own epistles, but they had what was called an amanuensis, a scribe that wrote the letters for them. So even though Paul wrote the letter to the Romans, we read here, I, Tertius, actually wrote it for Paul. I, Tertius, who wrote this letter, greet you. Gaius, host to me and the whole church, greet you. Erastus, the city treasurer, greet you. Whoa. Guess what this says? Erastus, city treasurer. Oh. <laughs> it gives me chills. I've seen this many times, still gives me chills. You're reading this from the scripture, from the old parchments, 2,000 years old, of a letter from Paul here, writing to the Romans, and he says, your friend Erastus, the wealthy man who built this, and he said here in this writing what it said all together is, I'm going to actually read it to you from the book I have, because they uh, get the precise language here. Erastus, in return for his idolship, which means being in charge of the, of the uh, treasury of the city, being the city official. This is what he wrote in his honor, his own honor. Erastus, in return for his idolship or being made treasurer of the city, lays this whole pavement for you, people of Corinth, from my own expense. <laughs> when you walk by my name, bow. <laughs> this was before Paul came to Corinth. I bet you he was a little more humble about it afterwards. The name Erastus is mentioned three times in the New Testament. He was mentioned also as a fellow worker with Paul who traveled with him and one who helped Paul along the way. There's a question whether they're all the same person or Erastus was a common name. So if this just said Erastus, it wouldn't mean a lot. But the fact that it says what his title is means a whole lot. Was the other two names associated with Paul this man? Nobody knows, but speculation by conservative theologians is yes, because it is the way it's mentioned and what books it's mentioned and who he's friends of implies that not only was he the treasurer here, but he gave up what he had to become a fellow worker with Paul, brought his money into the, into the endeavor, put his money in his life where his mouth was. And just like he was generous to the city of Corinth and built this walkway for them when he met Jesus Christ after the preaching of St. Paul came through this town, my guess is that he put his money in his mouth where, and just as generous to the gospel as he was to the city of Corinth and he took his money and he gave it to Paul and he served with Paul till the end of his life. I wanted you to see this and I'll give you a few minutes to take pictures because this ties the gospel of Jesus Christ and the epistles and writings of the New Testament directly to history and the stones cry out to you today and say believe your Bible, believe your church because it's telling you the truth and the Bible is a book of history. When we read about the gospels and Jesus and Paul and Corinth and all these things, this book does not begin with once upon a time in a land far away as though it's a fairy tale. This confirms that Christianity is rooted in history. It is true, and there's only one reason to be a Christian. There's only one reason I'm a Christian, and that is because I am convinced it is the truth of reality. And if you can prove to me it's not, I'm going to go up there and eat and drink and be merry, for tomorrow I become worm food. And that's exactly what Paul said. If this is not true, if it is not historical, if there is not a God who's actually going to judge you, then don't waste your time being a Christian. Go out with the prostitutes, eat and be gluttons and live because in a few years you're going to be dead. Enjoy your life. But if it is true and rooted in history, then live your lives holy and be careful how you conduct yourself because tomorrow you will give account of your life to God. That's why I love this stone. The Bible's true. What we believe is rooted in history. And I want people on my pilgrimages, whether they're here or to Israel or anywhere else, where else, to be ready to go home and to die for Jesus Christ if you have to, because you know it's true. Amen. 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 Let's go.